I've always been a huge fan of Zelda. Some might even call me Zelda mad. I didn't even know how much I love Zelda, but apparently this article seems to think that I do. So I decided to recreate the ocarina that Zelda uses in Ocarina of Time and turn it into a Twitch widget. You know that feeling when you're streaming and you really need to take a huge shit? but you don't because you're too insecure about your viewership dropping. Well now, instead of my viewers getting bored and then leaving me like every woman I've ever loved, they can play the Ocarina just by typing through Twitch chat, just like the good old days, and it'll play all the sounds. And if they get the right sequence, it will play the song that they played and show the name of the person that played that song. I tweeted a video last week and Apparently there are a lot of rabid Zelda fans that really wanted to know how I made this widget. How did this Ocarina of Time widget come to be? This video is not gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial. It took me like 12 hours to make this widget. But if you wanted to skip the next 10 minutes of pointless storytelling, I did upload the widget on Patreon for you guys to download. So if you wanted to add it to your stream, you can go get it there. This is gonna be more of a vlog style video, just walking you through my thought process because uh, the level of detail I went into this is borderline obsessive. Shout out to the sponsor of this video, VIP SCD Keys. If you've just built a computer and you're looking to get Windows 10 installed, you can get a Windows 10 OEM license for as little as $16. Just head on over to VIP SCD Keys and use a secure payment method like PayPal. Use the code NUTTY to get 25% off. Yeah, 25% off. They'll send you an activation key right to your email and you just shove that into your Windows settings. No more Windows watermark for you. And you can get all the personalization options now. The keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11 for free, or if it's easier for you, you can just get a Windows 11 Pro key for as little as $22. The code is nutty at checkout. Again, 25% off. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Now, when I started this, I had no idea exactly what I wanted. Originally, the idea was to have a drum kit that gets triggered by Twitch chat, kind of like Wii Music, but something about that idea just, just wasn't resonating with me. I needed something that my viewers really wanted to play with, you know? Like, like the Coco Melon for adults. And that's when it hit me. Zelda's Ocarina. It's perfect. It fits the theme of my stream. I already have a bunch of old school Nintendo inspired channel point redeems. On a button. I do not care. Only now I actually had to make the widget and I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but if I was gonna pull this off, I needed it to be as authentic as possible. And to do that, I needed to gather some assets. So starting with the sound effects, just a quick Google search revealed the original ocarina sounds that play every time you hit the notes in Ocarina of Time. Next, I wanted to have an animated Zelda pop up. So it's like he's actually playing the notes. I tried to find a Google if there was like a pre-made transparent GIF already that I could use, but couldn't find anything. So I had to resort to rotoscoping a video of Zelda and I don't know how rotoscoping works. Luckily, there was a really good tutorial on YouTube, shout outs to this guy, that showed me exactly how to rotoscope inside of DaVinci Resolve, which is great because I already use Resolve for editing my videos. So I just found some footage on YouTube, downloaded it using a program called Satcher.io. It's what I used to download YouTube videos. And I got to rotoscoping and this is the result, which is pretty good for my first ever time rotoscoping. Next, I had to get the graphics for the buttons that appear on screen and the stave, the thing that has the musical notes. I don't know if that's what it's called. I had to Google that. Like I said, I wanted this to be as authentic as possible. So originally I just Googled for the original sprites that they use in Ocarina of Time, but the quality wasn't up to the standard that I wanted. So I literally resorted to recreating the buttons inside of Affinity Designer, which is what I used to like design all my thumbnails. And uh, yeah, that was totally worth it because the buttons came out perfect. Now that I have all the assets, it's time to write some code. Programming. Software development. I wanted the sound of the ocarina to play every time someone typed out a message in Twitch chat. And to do that, I used the trusty old streamer bot. Now I did have to resort to some programming skills to pull this off. Remember when I used to be a programmer and then they like fired me? 
Yeah, yeah, those skills, I had to use those. Now, don't be afraid about what you're gonna see. You don't need to know any programming to use StreamerBot, but if you know programming, then it really helps out for this. It didn't take me long to get the actual sound effects running, but next I had to work on the graphics. How was I gonna make the notes appear inside of OBS? The original plan was to make a JavaScript widget, which would have made it really easy to import it into OBS with like just a simple browser source. The only problem with that idea is that, I don't know how JavaScript works, which is probably why I got fired. So I said, fuck it, okay? We're gonna make the entire widget using nothing but streamer bot and OBS Studio. So I jumped into OBS and immediately created a brand new scene to hold our widget. The idea is that I would add all of my graphics into one scene. And then if you wanted to add the widget, you would just nest that scene into your other scenes. The first thing I do every single time I make a new widget is I right click the scene and I add a new filter. We're gonna add a crop filter uncheck the relative box, and then set the resolution of our widget inside of this filter. What this does is when you nest this scene into your other scenes, it doesn't appear like this gigantic source. It's just like this tiny little source that contains just your widget. After that, I just laid out all my graphics. So I added the staff, I added some dummy buttons, a text label. I actually managed to find the original fonts that they use for Ocarina of Time. The lines you see here, believe it or not, are actually just really thin color sources you can add directly in OBS. I probably could have just made this like a PNG file, but you know, it's the same thing. Also, I turned on checkerboard transparency in OBS to make things easier to work with. A lot of people don't know this, but OBS has a hidden checkerboard feature. It's called adding a PNG of a checkerboard at the bottom of your scene. This is where the tricky part comes in. Every time someone in chat adds a note, it needs to create a new button on screen and then shift all the other buttons on screen down the stave. Well, if you watch my videos, you'll know that in OBS, you can actually move sources around and animate them on screen using a plugin called Move Transition. And the way to do this is just by adding a filter to the scene. And we just add a move source filter and we're gonna tell it every time we turn this filter on, I wanna shift one of those dummy buttons 60 pixels to the left. So if we wanna move a button one note to the left, you just, you just toggle that filter on one time. But how do I get a new button to appear on screen entirely in OBS? And this is where I had to get mega galaxy brain, okay? Instead of creating a new button every time someone adds a note, I just added 12 dummy buttons to the screen and I just recycled those same 12 buttons over and over and over again. Here, if we follow one of these buttons that we've just added in OBS, it's just a normal PNG file, but as it moves and gets to the very left of the stave, it restarts and goes right back to the beginning of the stave and just gets recycled over and over again. My code also changes the PNG that's used for that image source. So it looks like it's a new button entirely, even though it's just recycling the old image sources. In total, I had to add four move transition filters per button. So if you do the math, four times 12 buttons, that's 36 filters that I had to add to that widget scene. Now adding 36 filters one by one is a major pain in the ass. So that idea, I just use code to mass add all these filters all at once. So the hard part was done. We got the notes sliding down the screen. Now I want it to be able to recognize the songs that Zelda actually plays. So in my code, I actually store the last 12 notes that my viewers type in Twitch chat and I store that as a variable inside of StreamerBot. And all my code would need to do is check if the end of those 12 notes match any of the 11 songs from Ocarina of Time. And if it does, then just play the sound of that song. So I had to download the songs from YouTube using our favorite YouTube downloader, Satcher.io. Bring those MP3s over into Audacity to normalize the audio. Later on, I was informed that Majora's Mask also has Ocarina songs, which I had no idea about because I have never played Majora's Mask before. I'm playing it on Twitch now, so if you wanna see me play Majora's Mask, then go watch me, because I'm probably gonna be doing that for the next like two months.
But yeah, at this point, the widget was more or less completely functional. It was just a matter of adding all of the finishing touches. The first thing is I wanted Zelda to bigify on screen every time chat gets one of the songs correct. That was really easy. You can just do that using move transition. I also thought it would be neat that whenever a song gets played, that it shows the username of the last person that entered a note, as well as the song that gets played. So I had to add two more text sources. The first one will be the label for the username. The second one will be the label for the song name. And then my streamer bot code will simply hide that instruction label and then show those two new labels with the username and the song name. I just used OBS's show and hide transitions to get that slide animation every time you hide and show a source. And just make sure that the username and song name are sliding in opposite directions so you can get this kind of effect. I also wanted the notes to flash white just like an Ocarina of Time every time one of the songs gets played. And to do that, I added a color correction filter to every single one of those buttons. And one of the cool features of move transition is that you can actually animate any slider on any filter. So what we do is using move transition, we would animate that brightness slider for that color correction filter. I wanted each button to flash three times, which meant I had to add six move value filters to every button, totaling seven filters per button. Again, doing the math, seven times 12, it's a lot of filters. And the final, final touch is I wanted to make it so that when I enable the widget, it shows an announcement in Twitch chat, giving them instructions on how to play with the widget. I even added some custom Twitch emotes using 7TV. If you don't know what 7TV is, it's a third party custom emote platform that allows you to have custom emotes in your stream, hundreds of them, even if you're non-affiliate and not a partner. But with the widget finally done, we can add that big widget into all of our other scenes and just activate it using a button on our stream deck or using a chat command to turn the ocarina on. And then my viewers can go ham while I go take a dump. And that's how the ocarina widget was made. I know his name's not Zelda, by the way. I just felt like triggering you guys. Please consider following me on Twitch if you want to play with the Ocarina widget. And like I said, if you want to download the widget for yourself, tier two on Patreon will get access to not only the Zelda widget, but all the other widgets that I've released. So uh, have fun with that. Thanks guys. See you later.